Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to today's video. And you guessed it, it's on the spectacular game Cassette Beasts. I was pleasantly surprised by this game, as I initially thought it was just another Pokemon clone. However, I was proven wrong. This game is a real gem. It's charming, personal and has a unique artistic style. Similar to Pokemon, Cassette Beast allows you to collect a variety of monsters to use in battle. But it also has its own twist with the addition of fusions. The game boasts impressive pixel graphics and a 3D environment, which makes the character in the open world really pop and stand out. Additionally, all the creatures in the game are inspired by human lore and literature. For instance, the Bin Vader is based on the Daleks from the British sci-fi series Doctor Who. Bloody brilliant. Cassette Beast is an incredible indie game. Its world building is phenomenal and the main characters are engaging and relatable and a beautiful soundtrack backs it all up. If you're looking for a game that offers monster taming similar to Pokemon, you'll find that and much more in this game. Your journey will be accompanied by intriguing companions, each with their own unique backstory from various times and worlds. The world is vast and exploration is highly rewarding, with no limits as long as you have the necessary tools. Additionally, the game features an engaging storyline about the quest to find your way home with the help of your newfound friends. Cassette Beast is an amazing game that was created by the talented development team at Business Studios, based in the United Kingdom. Taking inspiration from the popular games like Pokemon, Digimon and Persona, it took them three years to create this bloody beautiful game. Prior to this game, they also developed Leather's Inception, which is inspired by the Zelda games and features impressive pixel graphics. As I mentioned earlier, the gameplay of Cassette Beast is similar to that of Pokemon, but with some differences. In Cassette Beast, instead of AP being consumed per move, it is a bar that slowly builds up throughout the battle. Certain moves are locked off until you have enough AP. I personally prefer this system over Pokemon's, as it prevents move spamming and requires more strategic thinking during intense battles. Additionally, Cassette Beast introduces a new gameplay mechanic called Fusions, which adds another layer of depth to the game. There is a rock, paper, scissors element in the game, but instead of types getting critical advantages like in Pokemon, they develop buffs and debuffs, or even change types. For example, if you hit the ice type with fire damage, it turns into a water type. If you now hit the water type with another fire move, it gains a steam healing buff and fire is no longer advantageous against it. I think this is a great idea for a system like this, as it changes up the formula and gives the player more to think about when entering the fight. Also, the new fusion mechanic enables you and your companion to merge into a single colossal monster. Hell yes. You can merge with any of the 120 collectible monsters, resulting in over 14,000 possible combinations. This allows for more strategy in fights, with two types now fused into one monster, leading to a wide range of advantages and disadvantages. Now you might be wondering how to get a hold of these monsters, and who you'll be fusing with. I'll answer that for you now. When you first enter New World, you will encounter a lovely lady named Kaylee. She is the first of six companions that you'll meet, and I must say that all of them are equally as charming. However, I do have a small complaint. I wish there was full voice acting as the little tidbits you do get are well done and the voice talent is excellent. For instance, one of the characters you meet later on is played by Yuri Lowenthal, who is also known for playing Spider-Man. Anyway, I know I'm getting off topic. With your six options for companions, you'll love them all because you get to boost your relationship. Yes, there are five levels of your relationship with each character, each one providing new buffs to fusions. You boost up these levels by battling. Yes, taking on harder opponents and monsters will boost up your relationship. Hell yes. There's even even secret six option for five of the characters anyway, that uh, you can get romantically involved, you cheeky little buggers. It's fascinating because your companions are not all from the same time or even world. For example, my main companion was Meredith, who I found out while doing part of her quest. She's from the 1980s. Before I delve too deep into some of these companions' stories, let me tell you how to catch monsters. Once you meet Kaylee, she'll give you your first monster and tell you how to get more. You do this by recording, hence the name of the game. Unlike Pokemon, you can actually see your chance of capturing the monster above them, and the process does take two turns. During this time, the monster can attack you and obstruct your capture, which can be quite bloody frustrating. One important thing to note is that recording monsters does not stop the battle. You have only recorded a copy of them, so you still need to finish the fight. Master Chief, you mind telling me what you're doing on that ship? Sir, finishing this fight. Now the beast designs themselves I do like, though some of them are less than desirable, but I do believe that was the point of them. Overall there's 141 monsters in total, 12 that have been added by the new DLC. You'll find a favourite here is the pixel art is beautiful. I've always preferred the pixel designs for games like this and Pokemon, it's just so much more charming. These new monsters that you have obtained now level up on a star system, where the more you battle, the more stars your monster gains. When the creature has obtained 5 stars, it can evolve. 
To do this, you need to hit a campfire and a new screen will appear, enabling you to pick and evolve that monster. By adding stars to your new creature, you'll obtain stickers, which are the new moves, and materials that act like currency in this game. You can spend said materials at a cafe or campfires to heal your crew. I feel like this would be a good place to also mention something about fainting in this game. If your character faints, you can go back to the nurse in Harbour Town to recover. However, there are a few ways to prevent this from happening. You can use health potions and revive, which are known as rewinds and respools, respectively. Another way to prevent fainting is by using campfires, which act as a checkpoint to heal your character and allow your creatures to evolve when it's ready. Now onto the story of cassette piece. You wake up on the shores of New World without an idea how you got there. After exploring for a bit, you meet Kaylee, who saves you from the dangerous monster known as the Traffic Crab. Following the battle, you lose consciousness, but later wake up to find yourself in the company of a nurse and Kaylee. They explain that you can never return to your old world, so you ought to get accustomed to living in New World. Later on, you come across a creature known as an Archangel. You and Kaylee fuse to defeat it, and after the battle, the creature informs you there may be a way to leave the island. This marks the beginning of the main quest to leave New World. I won't be going into any more of the story, but I will say I bloody loved it. My only complaint is the pacing. But yes, you set the pace. What? I know, crazy. This game is open world. And you can do everything at your own pace with no story restrictions. Collecting more creatures will reward you with new mobility options such as gliding and climbing, but as I did say, the pace can be a bit weird as you have to find the locations by yourself or through rumours at the hub location called Harbour Town. I can see the lack of pressure in cassette beasts as a positive aspect of the game. Unlike in the Pokemon games, where the cover legendary causes chaos in the game and forces players to follow a specific path until they obtain or defeat it. In cassette beasts, the main bosses are hidden and not trying to destroy the world in the background. The game also offers a variety of side quests, including companion and ranger quests. The ranger quest is somewhat similar to the gym leaders in the Pokemon games. But instead of being associated with specific types, they are based on appearance and interests. Additionally, the game provides several other minor side quests along with the ranger task quests as the player progresses. You do also have a Team Rocket-like side quest as well, where you have to take down landkeepers bases with one of your companions. For a game like this, it really offers a real good variety of quests, giving you plenty to do with your time in New World. I really do appreciate this as when I've beaten plenty of the late Pokemon games, your core end game gameplay does end up just being collecting monsters and shiny hunting. Regarding the shiny Pokemon, the game has its own version called bootlegs, which are quite impressive. There are two types of bootlegs in the game, bloody brilliant. The first type is the shiny glitter option, which is the special type of bootleg in the game. The second type is an alternative type option, where the creature has a new look and a new type, similar to how region types work in Pokemon. Except, in the game, it's just a pallet swap. Both of these options are awesome, because your creature type changes, and the glitter option spreads everywhere, changing the opponent's type whenever they are hit. The chances of getting these bootlegs are 1 in 1000, which is way better than the awesome Pokemon and Temtem, but they're still quite rare. However, even in my base playthrough of the game, I have encountered both variants of bootlegs. Right now, peeps, it's time to talk about an essential aspect of gaming, the music. Cassette Beast has fantastic music, all done by Joel Bayliss, and the vocals are done by Shelby Harvey. The game's music is instrumental until you either fuse or enter a building, and that's when you hear Shelby's lovely voice. I love this idea, especially when it happens during a fusion as it ramps up the excitement. While it's not as intense as the bass drop in Payday 2, it still does a fantastic job of enhancing the gaming experience. The music is one thing that still lingers with me, and I'm listening to it as I write this script. Right, onto the not so glamorous part of the review. Yes, peeps, it's that time when I complain and talk about the bugs. I'll start off on a good note. I barely saw any bugs until the last part of my game. I know, so bloody close. But I will also note I am playing this game six months after it's come out, so a lot has been patched. So I thought I'd just check online to see what bugs still happen, and thanks to the wiki, it's all listed there. I'll display all the issues on screen for a while. There are a few minor ones, but the problem where the PC crashes seems very severe. As it states, the more creatures you add to the PC, the more bugs that will happen from this, as it has an infinite number you can add to it. The more you add, obviously, it just explodes and bloody hell, that's not good. Another significant issue is getting stuck in the abandoned mine. Let's get these addressed. Although I may have been fortunate with my playthrough, minor issues like these can be frustrating and can spoil the entire experience. Now onto my gripes about the game. I already stated one earlier, and that's about the voice acting. You have this amazing talent, yet they only do a few lines here and there. Come on, please don't tease me like that. I know you've already one up Game Freak and hired voice talent, but go all the way. I personally would feel way more immersed in this game if there were no cuts in the acting, as the story you give me is fantastic for a monster tamer game. My next critique would be the sticker system. It just needs that certain je ne sais quoi to it. 
I suggest a separate panel for switching out your monster's moves, instead of being just another section in the inventory. As I tended to really forget about it, as it was kind of hidden in the inventory. I know it's not hidden, but you know what I mean, it's just out of the way and, oh, oh there's my moves. Instead of, you know, having its home panel making it clear where it is, that's what I would have liked. Additionally, once your monster has a full moveset, any extra stickers go directly to your inventory, which can cause clutter over time. However, I appreciate this approach compared to other Monster Tamer games, where the moves are permanently forgotten. It allows for experimentation to see what works and doesn't. My last gripe would be the fast travel system, as you slowly unlock one with the train stations, but as they're in such odd spots I tended to not use them. I would say just adding campfires as the intended point of fast travel would fix this problem, as they're your rest points anyway. I may have lied just a tiny bit, I do have one more complaint. There is a certain mechanic in the game called Ghostly, in which creatures become invulnerable for 3 turns, but can still inflict damage. Annoying by itself, however, there is another modifier that can also extend the invulnerability for a few more turns, making it very difficult to defeat said creature. This becomes a problem when fighting against a ranger leader named Petty Dreadful. She's an absolute <laughs> who can use the attack repeatedly. She can be quite infuriating, especially during the rematch when she can fuse with her buddy. It is a challenging fight and can be quite frustrating to deal with. Enough complaining, let's talk about something I truly enjoyed. I have always been a fan of Pokemon and similar games, but to call this game just another clone is an insult to the developers. This game is absolutely beautiful and full of potential. You can see the developers have really expanded on the mechanics that Game Freak usually ignores. This game is open world and you don't have to rely on just one powerful creature to level up the others. Additionally, the game has some great voice acting. The story is also very interesting and I love the idea that creatures in the game are actually manifestations of human fantasy. I know that Pokemon is now open world, but have you seen the latest game? It looks visually unappealing and is still full of glitches, yet they're charging over £60 for it. On the other hand, there's a developer who clearly cares about their community and continuously adding content to the game. Recently, they even added more monsters to the base game and released a short DLC that is even more. It's refreshing to see the developers who are committed to improving their game for their players. I honestly wish that Game Freak would take inspiration from games like these. They never needed to switch to 3D graphics. In my opinion, Black and White 2 have always been the pinnacle of the Pokemon franchise. I love the pixel art and the little movement animations that the Pokemon have. That's probably why I absolutely fell in love with the graphics of this game. I discovered Cassette Beasts on Xbox Game Pass and decided to give it a try. It turned out to be an absolute gem and I enjoyed playing it so much I ended up purchasing the game myself to support the developers. Thank you Bitten for creating such a great game. I still have plenty to do in it and I'm looking forward to it. I highly recommend trying out this game, especially if you already have Game Pass. It's a special game and worth your time, especially if you enjoy Monster Tamer games like me. Thank you for sticking around to the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please stick around and subscribe and like the video and all that lovely stuff. Anyways, ta-ta for now.